Hey YouTube, I had this idea for a video that I haven't really come across before. You see, there's so many videos out there about how to take sharp photos every single time or the perfect one light setup, but really none of those make you a better photographer at the end of the day. Taking a tack sharp photo of sand with the perfect one light setup does not make a great photo. Why? So let's agree on something. Photography is a creative task in a creative industry that requires creative skills. When I look back at my entire career in this creative industry, it's been filled with great professional people telling me how to do things and me trying consistently over and over and over to get it right, screwing up time and time again until I could do it consistently every time. But the thing is, the challenge I'm trying to do correctly changes every single time. So can you imagine the amount of mistakes you have to make before your brain figures out the magic formula for to how to get something great every single time, no matter the challenge in front of you? And that's where you want to be every single time, is no matter what job's in front of you, you want to be great every single time consistently. So back to the reason for the video is, how can we get you to great quicker, sooner, and work through some of these mistakes even quicker by looking at everything that could go wrong? All of the mistakes and what makes your photography suck so we can get to greatness consistently quicker. To give you an example of how much a photographer can suck, take a look at wedding photography. A normal wedding photographer will take at least a thousand, if not two thousand photos in a wedding day. How many of those are actually used? Maybe 50% if you're you know, a really good photographer? That's 50% of your work that's never used. Why? Why is that? And that's if you're a great photographer. If you're new and you kind of suck, it's probably more like 25% of those 2,000 shots that are being used. And maybe only 5% of those are really great, top industry standard quality work. So let's take a look at what makes creative work suck. We're going to start really broad and high level, and we're going to work our way down into something more detailed. So number one, why your photos suck, is they lack any kind of purpose or objective. Why did you take that photo? To give you an example, when I first got my first DSLR, uh, first couple days I would take it out on a walk, take pictures of ducks, take pictures of buildings, uh, and some really boring landscapes. And these photos served absolutely no purpose uh, other than just making me happy. It was a great time in my life. I was learning photography. I wanted to be a photographer, maybe. And those photos make me happy, but that's all that they're for. They're completely meaningless to anybody else, except for me at that time in my life where I was in love with photography. They were basically practice photos. So the solution here is to define what your purpose is as a photographer at a given time, or give yourself a project to focus on and work on. You see, a project will give you something measurable, a target you can hit that you can actually use to try and measure on how good you're getting. And I truly believe that without this, your photography will always suck if there's no purpose or goal or reason for taking a photo. And I think this is why a lot of people starting out become wedding photographers, because it quickly gives them a purpose, a reason, something to shoot for, uh, something to strive for. It's the perfect place to rinse and repeat a certain task and get better at it over time really quickly. And hopefully you don't mess up some poor bride's wedding in the beginning of your career and learning experience. And you can take this whole purpose goal number one reason in a whole different direction. Uh, let's say, for instance, your client wants you to take a picture of their product so that they can display it and show it to their customers. And you decide to take a picture of this product at f1.2 because you heard that bouquet is beautiful in photography. Now, that picture of that product will be 90% blurry out of focus in the bouquet and if you were to put that online and try to sell it, your customers would have no idea what you're trying to sell. This is the perfect example of 
missing the point and objective of what you're trying to do. And it's the number one reason I'm saying your photos probably suck. Number two, the reason your photos suck is because they're straight up boring to look at. Believe it or not, photography, like art and design, there are principles of creativity that you must follow to create beautiful artwork that isn't boring. These principles are taught in schools around the world with people who are trained to become artists and designers and probably even photographers too. So if you're trying to become a photographer on your own and you haven't studied or looked at or considered any of these principles of design in your work, it's a huge reason why your work sucks. Principles like contrast, balance, rhythm, pattern, emphasis, unity, and movement. So if your photos of sharp sand with the perfect one light setup aren't gaining you any traction on social media, any generating any sales, it's because you're missing a fundamental part of this creative industry we call photography by not utilizing a single principle of design. So maybe the solution here for number two is you bring a checklist with you the next time you shoot and try to actually hit one of those principles I just listed, thereby also solving problem number one, having a purpose for what you're trying to shoot. What better purpose than an actual principle of design? Number three, the reason your photos probably suck is because they don't meet the industry standard of what's happening around you in the world. Think about it. There are 10 million cameras sold every single year in the whole world. That means there's 10 million other photographers who are doing incredible work out there. What does their work look like? Do you have any idea? Do you pay attention to that? Are you looking at what's going on around you? Or are you living in this bubble? What are the trends that other photographers are using? How are they processing their work? Are they using filters? What's the subject matter of their work? What's the technology that they're using? How much are they retouching their work? I bet you it's a lot. So if you're not paying attention to what's happening out there, you're living in this bubble world where your work is always great because it's all you know. But the 7 billion other people in the world are looking at this stuff and they're judging you against it and you need to know where you sit and where you stand. Now I'm not saying you go out and copy all of these other people, but you do need to emulate them like every single great artist in history throughout time has done. There is no original work anymore. It's all some kind of copy or reimagining or rework of some or multiple elements out there in the world. So go and find out what's happening in the world. So when some people hear this, they're going to think, I don't have the industry standard quality of gear to meet this demand, but I'm not even really talking about gear here. That's only maybe 50% of the problem. Even if you use your cell phone and you followed every single principle of design I mentioned in you know comment number two, why your photos suck, and you had a purpose, you're already better than 50% of the photographers in the world with your cell phone alone just because you're starting to solve some of these other problems that gear is not even a factor okay so let's get more granular and detailed and talk about something a bit more specific than like principles and theories and purpose number four the reason your photos suck is because you are not post processing your images or you're doing it very very poorly let me give you an example I'm trying to learn how to be better with video and video editing and videography and I know I suck at post-processing my videos. I don't know how to shoot in RAW properly to color edit them so I purposely don't shoot in RAW. It's the equivalent of shooting JPEG. I'm procrastinating and I'm avoiding it and I know it's why my work is suffering in that industry in that area and I know I need to study and get better at it. I believe this is what separates the very cream of the crop at the top of the photo industry versus everybody else. It's those guys who have gone out of their way to either learn post-processing and do it really well. To the point where when you look at their work you can't even tell. That's because it's not heavy-handed. 
and it exists without overshadowing the work itself. If you can see something's been post, processed, edited, and retouched, that photographer has failed. You're not supposed to know something's been edited. Uh, it's supposed to be hidden, it's supposed to be a mystery, an enhancement to the photo so that it's not a distraction, not the focus itself. So there's a lot of different photographers out there and some of them are what you might call camera operators. Their job in the industry is to shoot all day and then they hand off their work to another team that does all the editing and retouching. And there's a good chance that either those photographers don't really know about post-processing and all of the great things about it and how to bring their work up to the industry standard level of quality because they don't actually edit their work or they don't do it on a regular basis. And what they'll probably do is just run all of their images through the same plugin and then, you know, everything looks desaturated, everything looks over sharpened, everything looks flat and the same, you know, all thousand shots they did that day in their wedding was boom, you know, he, he was just a photographer. Somebody else is editing their photo, just running through a filter. Um, that is not the answer. And that's why your work might suck is because you're not actually editing your photos up to the industry standard level. So the last one is just something really, really simple. Uh, it's what a lot of people hang their hats on uh, because they're, they're learning and they're trying to figure out how to use the camera is, you know, number five, the reason you suck is you're just not following, you're failing at something in the technical realm. And what I mean by that, you know, we'll walk through some examples is something like your photos are out of focus. They're blurry. And, you know, what's the reason? Are you just shooting at too uh, low of a shutter speed? bring that shutter speed up so that things are sharp when you you know take photographs mistakes that you make early on in your career trying to shoot manual and you know you didn't have that setting right uh, or another one your your ISO was way too high and everything's grainy and it just it's not a great photo it's not really usable uh, just because your camera can shoot 1 million ISO doesn't mean you should you should be trying to keep it as low as possible so that your photos have a higher quality or something like exposure. You're taking a photo of your subject with, uh, he's in, he or she is in the shadow and it's really bright behind them. Your camera is going to basically create a silhouette. Or if you try to fix that photo, it's going to create something so grainy that trying to recover the shadows and the highlights, that again, the photo is not of industry standard quality. It's going to suck. Both of those photos kind of suck unless you're shooting for something kind of creative, which I do from time to time, but your whole day can't look like that. Your bride's portrait can't look like that. That's wrong. And these are just basic fundamental things of knowing how the camera works, how it, um, how it exposes for a photo and where your subject should be placed. It's not your fault. If somebody stood there, you need to learn how to talk to your subject, put them in a better spot to achieve a better photo. So something like location of your subject which creates an incorrect exposure. And we'll take a look at maybe one last one here. Your images might be under-processed. Maybe you're not processing them at all. You're just shooting JPEG and sending it out there. Or you're doing just a little bit and it's just nowhere near where, you know, the industry's at. Or you're over-processing your photos completely. Um, something I just saw today on a, you know, a Facebook group is this individual was sharing their photography of this beautiful model, beautifully lit, but then you look at their skin and you can clearly see they've used frequency separation way too much. Uh, it's just overkill. They look like an alien fuzzy skin. There's not a single blemish of original texture there and it's why your photos might suck. So I hope these shine a light on something you might be doing. Nobody likes to tell uh, their friends or their family members or their co-workers that their work sucks. It's it probably might end a friendship. So I'm doing it here for you Sorry, that might be why some of your work sucks uh, one of these five principles and if you've stuck around this long, I'll give you one more bonus reason why your work might suck. So number six is Your work might suck because you're just not trusting and listening to your gut that your work is good enough and that it's done. And what I mean by that is even the highest level professional might have a bad day where they're tired 
and they know they need to do something in their work and they get some kind of feeling looking at it but they just want to call it a day and just send their work out this is human nature we we get complacent and we just want to be done with something but they know deep down this is not really great it's not my best work uh, I should probably do that but I'm just gonna send it out so what we're talking about here is your discipline and your ego saying that this is good enough it's fine when really you know it's not and you're just not trusting your instinct and it's probably why some of your work sucks is because you know you should be doing something more of your work but you're not so you're kind of living in this bubble of ignorance telling yourself that it's good enough with no external feedback you're either not looking for it or you have none in your in your uh, your circle in your workflow and it should be painful to make great work. If it was easy, everybody would do it. And I think that's just part of you know how humans learn is we must do something painful to get better and it's unavoidable. So trust your instincts. Thanks, I'll see you later.